year we had around 30,000 transplantations out of which uh, like most of the uh, donations were from the deceased donor. Uh, I mean, the other 20 being, uh, I mean, this is donor, we have both DBD and DCD, so other 20 person is DCD, so you know, the world is moving towards DCD, and they have crossed uh, the stage of uh, uh, donation after brain death. And uh, unfortunately, look at the uh, Indian, uh, the uh, India in this map, so we don't have any data representing disease donation, so that is a very sad state of affair. So if you look at the India, so most of the southern uh, states, they are actively doing disease or transplantation. Uh, the particularly that our Telangana now is the number one, the Andhra Pradesh, the Tamil Nadu, which was uh, the number one uh, previously, the Karnataka, Maharashtra, to some extent Gujarat and Rajasthan. So these are some, most of the southern states are actively doing uh, uh, disease or transplantation. So at a national level, we have an organization called NOTO, the National Organ and Tissue Transplantation Organization, so which are trying to networking across the entire country. So through a SOTO, that means ROTO, that is a regional organ and transplantation organization. So we have five ROTOs in the country. And then these ROTOs, they have networking to the through, uh, SOTOs. So uh, the Tamil Nadu is uh, the ROTO for the southern states. And then uh, uh, all the southern uh, states, that is Karnataka, uh, uh, Andhra, Telangana, uh, Kerala, are under the control of uh, uh, the uh, Tamil Nadu. So uh, as uh, Madam said, and rather Madam said, we should have a networking. So now we have a networking, particularly for the disease or Transplantation. Whenever we have a donation in uh, one state, the organs are being utilized as per the allocation criteria of that particular state. And these organs are not utilized in that particular state, so we get a we alert to the uh, ROTO, that is the Tamil Nadu. And through ROTO, it is allocated to the other states, the SOTOs. So now we are trying to establish a networking in, uh, across the entire country. And if we have a donation in other ROTOs, so they get a uh, alert to a NOTO, and through NOTO, we get alert to, uh, to our own ROTO, and that's how we are trying to get a networking across the entire country and most of the times the kidneys are being utilized it is uh, the, uh, the organs are being shared in terms of only heart and lung so that's the reason why you know uh, this, there is not much of uh, organ sharing uh, in the uh, entire country so this is a need of this R. So as you know, everybody knows that there is a lot of uh, a huge gap between the organ requirement and actual transplantation happening. If you like the kidney, we have around uh, 2 lakhs transplantation requirement per year and only 9,500 transplantations are being happening. So coming to Jeevandan, it has come into picture in actually 2010 where the GO had come, the Jeevandan, the GO, GO uh, number 184. And uh, I mean actually it has started implementing in 2012 uh, during the uh, United Andhra and then it got uh, diverted, I mean uh, 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 bifurcated in 2015 with Telangana and Andhra Jeevandan, we called it as Andhra Jeevandan and Telangana Jeevandan. So since last five, uh, the four years we have been uh, uh, performing as a uh, Telangana state. So nodal center is at uh, Nizam Tutu Medical Sciences with a convener and administrative staff. We have uh, um, uh, a staff to go take care of the software part and we have people to care, take care of the uh, awareness programs and we have counselor. We have three counselors under Jeevan program. One has been placed in uh, Usmania, one has placed in, the, in, in Gandhi Hospital, particularly for the government hospitals. And for a successful program, so these are the actual the main uh, uh, players. So Jeevandan is a government platform. So government should have active participation for provider platform and it should regulate the entire the program. So another major player are the neurologists and neurosurgeons because unless they try to I mean, uh, declare, because most of the patients are, the, uh, the treating doctors are the neurologists or the neurosurgeons. So unless they are aware and they come forward and they try to declare uh, their brain death, we cannot proceed for the organ donation. And of course, as I said, Hospitals should be very proactive. Unless hospital administrations and hospital managements are involved, the whole system cannot run, cannot be activated, both uh, in corporate as well as in the private hospitals. And of course, another most ma major player is the police and forensic, because most of the time it is the road traffic accidents where the brain deaths are happening. So initial stages, the hurdle was the for getting the clearance from the police and the forensic for the postmortem. So we have to have uh, active participation from the police and the uh, forensic department, and we had a series of meetings with them, and that, that also be extreme by now and of course the most uh, the initial uh, the uh, hurdle during the uh, uh, pro program initiation was the organ allocation because most of the uh, donors they like uh, they wanted to know how the organs are being allocated whether deserving candidate 
data is being uh, getting the organ. So we should have a very transparent and very scientific and very clear uh, allocation procedure. I think we have achieved that. I'll discuss about that in the uh, next few slides. And of course, the public awareness programs, because unless uh, the uh, patient, I mean the, uh, the family members of the brain dead patients they agree, we cannot uh, go for an um, organ donation. So public should be aware and the public should come forward. So for that, we should have a various public education programs. And uh, last but not the least is the transplant coordinators, because these are the person who actually transform a brain death into a donor. So we do uh, conduct uh, the training programs for the coordinator as well. So this is the website. So initial during the uh, initial process of development of this Jeevan Dan, the so first thing we uh, got uh, clarified is the organ allocation. So we had a uh, uh, committee members, both I mean all the or for the specific for the each of the organ, the liver, kidney, heart, and the and the lungs. We had a I mean you know, so expert uh, giving their opinion about how the organs have to be allocated. They have recommended the guidelines. We have then trans uh, translated these guidelines into an online allocation procedure, and then the National Informatics Center has. Uh, been an, uh, uh, helped us in evolving uh, this website. This is very transparent and dynamic. So we have allocation procedure for the kidney. We have a, a score system. Uh, basically, we have, we have around 10 to 15 parameters where each of the parameters have their score. For example, date of initiation of dialysis and date of registration, the previous uh, graft failure, they have that in the score. And then the va vascular access uh, failure, each of these access failure have their score. And then uh, whether pay, uh, when a patient was a previous donor. So we have a score as per uh, the, uh, uh, the individual criteria. So during the registration itself, we get a score and then we have committee members who, who try to approve, we have to verify all these uh, the, the points and then check the, whether these are the correct or not and then they approve. If they are not satisfied, they try to decline and then uh, pass a comment and then again the patient have to submit all those details. So we have a system for the registration and then for the approval also once uh, the patients are approved, only then they come under the waiting list. So once there is a donor in any of the the hospital so the donor details are entered once donor details are entered automatically system select the recipient list that's how it has been translated to online which is very transparent which can be seen by all the hospitals once there is a donor and the donor details are entered and we have got uh, the one of the bet, best uh, the scotch award for the 2015 in at delhi and the same website has been adopted by the other state as well. So we initially the Kerala have come forward the last I mean, two years before we have shared our website with the Kerala and our team, NIC team is working with the Kerala and even uh, the Karnataka recently among the last year they have also asked for this uh, the uh, website and the, our team is working with them and I mean in fact most of the 90% of that uh, uh, the Karnataka website is ours, they are following the same thing except for the allocation they have changed uh, their allocation criteria and recently last month uh, even the Gujarat has called us and we we have shared our this okay, Gujarat is again uh, they have uh, uh, following our website our team is uh, developing and then recently even Maharashtra so the all the southern state where the disease donor transplantation is active so they, they are following the same website so we have shared we have actually you know uh, had uh, several presentations with the note also because the uh, the the future is as madam said the registration maintaining a registration is most important once we have a unified uh, system of uh, uh, the and I mean uh, data capture and entry and allocation so we can we can actually have a uh, 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 the data available. So we have actually given um, uh, the very several presentations to the NOTO also and we have requested them to uh, know, enroll the same website to the, across the entire state so, the, so that the data can be captured at Delhi, sitting at Delhi with a single click. So as Madam has actually shared this, we have around 29 hospitals registered under Jeevandan actively doing transplantation. And around more than 5,000 people have been registered for various organs. As you can look here, the one NIMS has got one of the major uh, the re uh, recipient registry, like uh, registered for transplantation is 9,906. It is I mean including all the organs. So as I mean, uh, uh, um, uh, we have two kidneys uh, for, from a donor. So when organs are allocated, the in-house invariably get the kidney, and the common pool is allocated as per the patient uh, seniority. So cumulative score, whatever the patient has, the ma ma maximum score will have the first uh, organ being allocated to that particular patient irrespective of the hospital. Even we have a uh, facility for the transfer, patient can transfer from one hospital to the other hospital and the patient car carries there the cumulative score. So it is a patient based allocation not the hospital based allocation, the common pool kidney. So and I mean uh, uh, so as NIMS has got more I mean, uh, 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 most of the patients being registered and they are active. So another I mean, uh, uh, reason why I request is because most of the time we have allocated the organs to the government hospitals, the Usmania and the NIMS. But 
what we have found out there is a, most of the time it is declined by the hospital or the patient. This is because either patient is not poor, patient is, has infection, patient is not willing, patient is somewhere else. So may now, what I request is to increase the recipient pool. Now that we have a hub and spoke model and then we have all the patients being dialyzed at the peripheral centers, you can actually you know, uh, they, uh, work up all those patients actively, put them in the active list so that they, I mean, your uh, recipient pool increases and invariably you get the organ. And make sure that patient is active, not that patient is registered and they forget. And ultimately when organ is allocated, the patient is not fit. So you have to actually follow the patient, call them every month, see the patient is active at the time when the organ is allocated. And what we have seen is 50 percent of the, I mean, the organs are being declined by the government hospital, particularly Usmania and the NIMS. So you can see I mean, like, uh, uh, so I mean, uh, uh, Global Hospital, they have 755 and then Apollo Hospital has maximum uh, the uh, registered recipients 1004, Kims has 557 and then Yashoda has 645. These are combined list, all the organs. And uh, I mean, this is what is 5,200 organ. I mean, patients have been registered for different uh, organs, and uh, uh, kidney is around 2,000, uh, uh, 2,606. Liver is 2,414. Initially, liver were hardly few patients. Now you can see uh, over a period of time, the liver has actually it's uh, I mean uh, it's uh, it's near to a kidney transplantation. So that is the increase in demand of liver transplantation as well. So just trying to look at the waiting list across the world. So US being the one of the major uh, 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 transplantation center. So you see. 1 lakh people, more than 1 lakh people are registered for organ transplant. This is last year data. And then uh, one of the states which is uh, where the Indian population is very large, 7, 11,000 people have registered for organ transplantations. So this is also the waiting list. And if you look at the, uh, the donation, so over a period of uh, five, six years, initially 2013 we had 41 donations. It's been increasing gradually and last year we had 160 donations. So like uh, as Madam was telling, initially you know, it is, uh, I mean, uh, initially Initial hurdle is initiation the program. And second, I mean, uh, challenge is to maintain a program. So slowly, graph increases after time we achieve a plateau and then it start decreasing. So I'm a little apprehensive whether we have achieved that plateau stage and then we have to work more. And we have to find various you know, ways to increase this donation rate and keep uh, the graph going up. And particularly if this year, if you see there are only 73 donations, we have crossed um, the half of the year. And uh, if we continue, then probably we're not able to that figure of 160. So this probably because we have been uh, listening most of the, uh, you know, the organ trafficking in the media and then the print media and then the, this one, basically because of uh, the recently in Andhra Pradesh, we have Isaac incident and then uh, one was in Nellur. So after that, donation rate has uh, come down. In fact, we had few donations. People were willing to donate. Hospitals were apprehension to take, uh, to declare a brain death. And then, uh, I mean, it's difficult to maintain uh, the donor's uh, family for long uh, until we, you know, make all the arrangements and they do dropped out. So these so this has happened recently, so that has actually, uh, you know, the donation rate is coming down. Now, if you look at the donation rate, so one of the slides by the initial speaker show that the donation rate in India is only 0.5 per million population. Look at the Telangana donation rate. Initially, it was combined. We have didn't calculate, uh, but after division, we tried to calculate. It is 3.01 uh, per million population in 2016, and 17 it was 4, and then 2018 it was 4.73, and now 2019 it is 4.01 uh, per million population. If you look at the individual organ transplantation happening, we had around 1,068. Uh, kidney transplantation, disease no transplantation, and 634 liver transplantation, 94 heart transplantation, and lungs uh, 25, and pancreas, we had pancreatic transplantation of 9. So total we had 2,500 odd uh, organs in tissue transplantation. <coughs> And this uh, year-wise is the major organ transplantation, 188 kidney major organs, kidney, liver, heart, lung, and pancreas were transplanted. So this is the organ-wise split. So as you can see, there has been a steady increase in the kidney transplantation, liver transplantation, the heart. I mean, heart and lung has been the static, uh, more or less. So basically, we have to consider also on the heart and lung transplantation. And uh, I mean, a live transplantation is mostly the female, which is a donor. But uh, unusual, I mean, like uh, unlike uh, live transplantation, deceased donor is a male. Males contributed about 78 uh, percent of the donation, uh, and females contributed to 22, 22 percent. 
and government hospital we had uh, 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 around 254 uh, donations in uh, kidney transplantations 21 liver transplantations six heart transplantation one pancreas transplantation if you look at uh, hospital wise we had 222 transplantations at nims usmania 52 and gandhi eight transplantation so all these transplantation at uh, uh, government hospitals were uh, were uh, covered under arogeshi this uh, of course this has been a debate and dr girish nayar has explained what is the, the, the need of uh, this transplantation procedure and the drugs being covered uh, free of cost under arogeshi so this has been highlighted by dr manisha she meant like we are regularly conduct the coordinator training program because these are the key person because transplantation team should never go and approach the donor's family and the, even the neurologist treating doctor should also never um, tell them about uh, the organ donation but of course if the family members ask they can give a clarify clarify so we should have a, a third person who's neither in the transplantation team nor the treating team so these are the coordinators who approach them counsel them clarify their doubts and apart from that once they agree they have to coordinate lot of things uh, particularly coordinating with the donor's family coordinating with the i mean a neurologist and neurosurgeon for declaration then with the forensic and police um, if there is a medical legal case then the, the recipients and then the hospitals for it so all these things we try to you know uh, uh, have a training program for them it's an annual training program we have got a, a manual also for the dedicated to the training program coordinator training program and we give certificates of course this photo was shared by even manisha as well so recently last week only we had uh, Completed one uh, uh, third session of training program and we given certificates to them. We are likely to start the fourth session. What I request is, I mean, all the hospitals, particularly the intensive care staff, and then uh, the, those people who are actually involved in the ICU care, they can register uh, so that the awareness in general increases, and then the uh, optimization, donor optimization, and all those things definitely it will reflect onto increasing the donation rate. so fourth uh, session we are likely to start next month and the recently one more issue is the public awareness as i said they should be a uh, public should be aware of that particularly i mean in cities most of the uh, 70% of the public are aware of the organ donation the major challenge in the periphery is the districts particularly so this is a new initiative by jeevandan where we go to the family during their uh, the, i mean uh, ceremonies like 13th day or 11th day whatever it is so during that time at their home we go and try to because the main apprehension by the donor family is particularly from the villages if they go back home so people in other villages will tell that that you have sold your organs so they are little apprehensive about that so the, that's the reason why we go there and facilitate them uh, honor them so that the positive message goes to the village villages also so this is the new initiative this has actually increased a lot of awareness in the uh, villages as i said police were another challenge because most of the time 80% is in medical legal cases and then all the traffic come I in mean, accidents occur in the peripheries when they come uh, uh, and they get admitted in the hospitals in hyderabad we um, we face lot of difficulties in getting the police from the peripheries so we had a series of meetings with the police personnel and then we had a circular being passed to all the police station that the nearest uh, uh, police uh, station which is attached to that particular hospital should do come and do the panchnama and this is uh, one of the donor felicitation program we We have done recently last month, and uh, this is the we have an, uh, initiated another program uh, uh, through the police commissioner of Cyberabad, uh, where he has shown lot of interest to create an awareness. So we regularly conduct and police people come there in batches, and we try to train them because uh, they are the important people. They basically you know we have actually taken the help of the, even the police S I S E S. In the when uh, uh, when the donation happens, uh, uh, you know uh, the donor families from the villages, and they have lot of appreciation. attention they believe the local either the local police or the local leader so we try to contact the police and they ask me you know, they have help help us in, in in even counseling as well and of course other panchanama and then police or uh, the, the traffic clearance all also been you know we try to uh, uh, i mean uh, make them aware all of all these things <coughs> So in fact, uh, this police commissioner, he is very interesting. He says, I mean, he can also, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, talk to uh, uh, the uh, doctors for a declaring brain, particularly uh, the hospitals which are there in his jurisdiction. So he said, we I mean he can uh, influence the hospitals in you know uh, registering as a non-transplant organ retrieval centers and motivate the doctors for organ uh, declaration and uh, organ donation. So he is little proactive. So he is taking he'll ha his help in uh, motivating the. Uh, Uh, hospitals as well as the police people so another uh, challenge is the religious so I mean if you look at the data I have not I mean come out with the data exactly but if you look at the data we have I mean uh, 
30 to 40 percent of the, all the recipients are from the Muslim community. But if like the donation, so previously we didn't have even single donation from the Muslim community. But uh, last two years we had five donations. So we had mobilized a few religious uh, scholars and we have asked them to address their own because if we address they may not take it positively. So we have mobilized the, the religious scholars, particularly the religious scholars and then you know we have uh, uh, tried to change their view in terms of uh, the organ donation. And we have tried to share the, all the Muslim countries, Saudi Arabia, that the, the, the data about the deceased donor. So somehow, like, uh, I mean, let the men, they are trying to change their attitude towards the organ donation, but it should be a continuous process. Like, uh, we should uh, target them regularly. And we have been trying uh, even the Muslim hospitals, like Deccan Hospital, and we have uh, other uh, Astra hospitals. We are trying to contact them and, you know, register them initially, at least as a transportation center, uh, slowly we can, you know, uh, motivate them for organ donation as also. So it's been there in the 10th class state syllabus also. And uh, recently we have been given as one of the best state for uh, organ donation, performing state for the organ do donation. And if you look at the, you know, uh, there was uh, one uh, uh, article published in the uh, literature saying that if you, I mean, there was survey was done where people were asked about the organ donation. So in India, you can see 74 but percent of the people they, policy. yeah, they are willing for organ donation. So it's not the public; it is basically the the our own med medical fraternity and other infrastructure and the policies. So which which is most important in you know increasing the donation rate. So public by and large are willing to I mean, come forward for organ donation. So we have a, in terms of policies, you know, being a declaration by the neurologist, neurologist, our own neurology colleagues, and then the uh, intensive in terms of um, optimization, and of course the infrastructure in the public sector as my Dr. Manisha said. So all these things are the challenges in increasing the organ donation rate. So if you want to go fast, then you should go alone. But you, but our goal is, you know, long term. So you, you are, if you want to go far, you be together, work together. So my aim is to work together. And these are the future directions. I think, uh, I mean, apart from water, I have discussed about the infrastructures, the declaration, the policies. So next, I think the Bene declaration should be made mandatory. In fact, Manisha, Manjushan, and myself have worked on it, on this. But again, it depends upon the bureaucracy and the uh, government involvement in uh, making a policy. And of course, the opt out again that it uh, was uh, equity government pa uh, participation uh, to comment on that. And uh, does the time has come to you know increase uh, to a DCD, expand our uh, this one duration to a DCD also? So all these things has to be discussed. So slowly while trying to now, maybe I've been concentrating on uh, the cities only. Slowly we would like to go to uh, districts. By as Dr. Ganga said, we have to basically increase the ICU setup so that the organ donation rate increases and improve our the trauma centers in the periphery so that the organ donation rate increases. So this is what is I just want uh, was looking at the uh, uh, transplantation live and the cadaver. So look at the. Uh, the percentage. So over the last five years, the percentage of disease donation rate is gradually increasing. So it is 32 last year. So this is is uh, across Telangana. So this is the yearly transplantation, and this is uh, the live, and this is the cadaver transplantation. The cadaver transplant rate is gradually increasing over a period of years. And this is the data from the NIMS. And NIMS again, the, the cadaver transplantation rate is increasing. Last year we had 50% uh, being uh, the cadaver transplantation. So we are looking at uh, you know a day where uh, the disease don donor transplant would be, you know, will match the uh, U.S. data. The 80 percent of the uh, transplantation would be from the deceased donor and 20 percent would be from the live. So thank you very much and uh, excellence is a continuous process and it is not an accident. So I think we